All right, so now I'm going to show you guys my mechanical keyboards. So I've owned a lot of keyboards, of course, um, but I'm just going to show you guys the mechanical keyboards I've owned uh, because I actually, you know, I have a, a bias towards mechanical keyboards. I've always found them better to type on, more feedback, more travel, more responsive, etc. So yeah, going back to my first mechanical keyboard, it was the Aorus K K3, the Thunder K3. And uh, I had this back when I was in Korea, bought it in 2015. And yeah, this keyboard was my first mechanical keyboard. It had uh, Cherry MX Red switches, I believe, which are kind of linear switches. They're not like tactile, they're not clicky. They're linear switches, which means they're fairly like not uh, that noisy and they're really good for gaming. So. Um, I know this keyboard seems a little bit bulky now for a 10 keyless keyboard, but back then it was actually one of the more compact keyboards on the market. And the reason is because back in 2015, most of the mechanical keyboards on the market were full size. There wasn't that many compact 10 keyless keyboards. So the Aorus Thunder K3 was one of the few. So yeah, I remember this being fairly expensive when it came out. I mean, this is because it's Aorus, and Aorus is a, basically the high-end premium brand of Gigabyte. Uh, so when Aorus debuted, um, yeah, basically all their laptops were really expensive, all the peripherals were really expensive. But at the time, like I said, uh, this was one of the few compact 10 keyless mechanical keyboards available on the market. So I remember getting this for around $150 US, I think. Um, I think what I liked about it was not just because it was compact, but um, it had an easy way to like, uh, you had volume controls, you had a volume roller there, so you can easily adjust the volume, you can easily adjust the brightness of the keys as well, they both have rollers, and you can easily mute the volume just by pressing down on the roller too. So yeah, overall it's a, it's a pretty nice mechanical keyboard, I mean it was my first one. So it was my first experience with a mechanical keyboard, Cherry MX Reds, um, so definitely not um, not the authentic mechanical keyboard experience with the tactile and clickiness, but still like really a huge upgrade over the um, the Asus Chief 751 laptop that I had, which is what I was mainly using it with. And yeah, this keyboard, um, I think I used uh, pretty much all my time in Korea, so yeah, about two or three years I think I used it for. And yeah, I think about three years because I ended up using it for about a year after I came back to the US as well. And um, this keyboard, I also ended up giving away to my friend, uh, along with the laptop. So I gave away my Asus ROG gaming laptop to my friend, along with the Aorus Thunder K3 keyboard, along with the Asus Gladius mouse. So that was all <laughs> part of my, my gift. So yeah, it's a great keyboard, I think, for the, for the time. Um, now there's a lot, you know, you can find 10 keyless uh, keyboards that are a lot more compact than that one. Um, but, you know, at the time, like, this was one of the few options available on the market, and I think it was fine for what it is at the time. And then my next mechanical keyboard after that was the Cooler Master Master Keys Pro S, um, which was a 10 keyless keyboard uh, as well. And this one I think I got as an upgrade over my Aorus because it was uh, a lot slimmer and not as bulky as my Thunder K3 was. Um, and this one came with Cherry MX Brown switches, which are tactile switches, not clicky, but tactile switches, which I liked better than the, the Cherry MX Reds on my Aorus. And um, this one I kept for only six months, I think, because I ended up wanting a full-size keyboard instead. And this one was actually quite pricey. I, I think it was like $130 US. So it's quite pricey. Um, I didn't keep it for that long because I, I ended up wanting a full-size keyboard uh, as my main mechanical keyboard. Um, but yeah, I remember it being pretty good for the time. Um, just I wanted a full-size keyboard after that. Just I had more room on my desk at that time. So I wanted to upgrade to a full-size mechanical keyboard. Um, so yeah, uh, I used this one for yeah maybe about half a year. My next keyboard after that was the CyberPower PC keyboard. Uh, so this one uh, was surprisingly pretty good. Um, I actually got it as part of a package when I uh, customized my CyberPower PC computer uh, back in 2019. And uh, this came along with my Cyber Mouse as well as another $5 add-on. So just like with the Cyber Mouse, I think it's a pretty good value. Like for $5, you're getting this pretty decent mechanical keyboard. And um, just like the Cyber Mouse, it, it was a lot better than I expected, actually. You know, I thought, okay, might as well add on this $5 keyboard. You know, it's, I mean, for five bucks, what do I have to lose, right? So um, yeah, so I got it and I started using it and um, really turned out liking it. It's uh, It's got MX Blue type switches. So it's not really authentic Cherry MX Blue, but it's got um, those types of switches. That's both clicky and tactile and um, ended up really liking it. So yeah, I used this with my CyberHire PC, which was my main gaming desktop for, for about, uh, I would say a year and a half-ish. That was my main gaming uh, desktop. So yeah, um, during that time, I used the CyberPower PC keyboard actually as my main keyboard, uh, which turned out to be 
pretty decent performing mechanical keyboard, uh, especially for the price I paid for it. Like, like I said, I only paid five bucks for it. Didn't expect it to be as good as it is. Um, same thing with the Cyber Mouse, the same package. Um, yeah, for five bucks, really couldn't go wrong. Like, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's not like the best mechanical keyboard I've used, but it's definitely um, worth it for the price. And then after that, I got the Logitech Orion G610. Uh, this one is, um, is ended up being my main mechanical keyboard for the next three years. So uh, yeah, I used this one in San Francisco. I also used it uh, when I moved to Vancouver as well uh, for a little bit. So yeah, this one had Cherry MX Browns as well, and it was a full-size keyboard. Uh, and yeah, it wasn't as expensive as the Cooler Master or the Aorus. I think I only paid about $80 US for this one. So not a bad price at all. Um, and for the time I used it, right, it was it was pretty good. Um, so I used this one on basically all the way until it uh, stopped functioning, basically. Um, and it stopped functioning because, uh, like, I'm a lazy person, so I don't really clean my keyboards very often so it ended up the keys ended up getting kind of or the switches actually end up getting kind of filled up with gunk so it ended up being really sticky and it ended up being really hard to clean so after about three actually three and a half years i used this keyboard for um after about three and a half years um yeah this keyboard was basically not very usable anymore because uh, the keys would just be too sticky and um and i you see the the left shift key basically was unusable because um yeah it's just <laughs> pretty much the switches were all gunked up so yeah unfortunately uh this this keyboard wasn't very usable anymore and i had to replace it but for the time i used it for about three and a half years it was my main mechanical keyboard my main gaming keyboard and i really liked it especially like i didn't i think they would, the price was very fair eighty dollars for um, a mechanical keyboard full size with cherry mx browns uh, like authentic cherry mx browns i'm not talking about logitech's own switches they have their own romer g switches but uh, in this particular model, they used the authentic Cherry MX Brown switches. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, and I ended up giving this one to my brother as well. Um, I remember like a cool feature of this one was it had the roller um, kind of wheel for adjusting the volume, which is really nice and convenient. Um, also had the, you know, standard media buttons and mute button, which is also pretty convenient as well. So yeah, overall, a uh, pretty nice keyboard, um, but just had to upgrade it because yeah, it was, yeah, I, I got too lazy and um, it ended up just getting kind of the keys and it switches just, yeah, it wasn't uh, working very well anymore. All right, and that brings us to my current mechanical keyboard. So this is the Corsair K63 Compact. Um, I bought this for, I think around $70 US and it was in 2020. So yeah, almost three years ago. And uh, this one comes with Cherry MX Reds, authentic Cherry MX Reds. Um, you can tell it's missing a few keys because I lost some, unfortunately. Uh, originally, I bought this to use with my lap board. Um, so I actually did a video showing, yeah, I used this in my living room with my computer hooked up to my TV. And this one can actually slot into a Corsair lap board so I can use this wirelessly. And yeah, this one is wired and wireless, which kind of makes this one special. Uh, this was now pretty much my backup keyboard because um, I... Uh, I have a newer keyboard right now, which I prefer using, but I think this is a pretty decent compact keyboard. There's nothing wrong with this one. Um, yeah, just, I think maybe it's the MX Reds. I'm not like a huge fan of MX Reds. I know it's like great for gaming and stuff like that. You know, nice linear switches. It's not like really noisy or anything like that. I mean, compared to the other switches, but yeah, I just prefer browns and blues actually compared to reds. I'm not a huge fan of reds. Um, but yeah, this is the Corsair K63. Uh, and you have media buttons up here, right? Standard for a lot of keyboards. Uh, this one you can, uh, actually let's just turn it on. Uh, this one can be wireless and wired. Uh, right now I have it connected. So we can, uh, yeah, turn it on right here. And yeah, you can see light up. Um, so yeah, you can change the lighting here, different. Uh, and then you can uh, lock the keyboard actually, I guess. Um, yeah, and can you, you have different indicators here for the wireless and stuff, for the caps lock, mute, and uh, volume up and down. I prefer to have the rollers. Um, that's I think that's another reason I don't use this keyboard as much, is because uh, when I'm actually gaming and stuff like that, and, uh, and working, um, I think the volume roller is the thing I use the most. So with a lot of my keyboards, like my Logitech Orion uh, G610, or my current Rocket Vulcan keyboard, they have a volume roller. This one doesn't have any kind of volume roller. It's just like you use this instead, just buttons. So yeah, it's it's fine, but it's not as convenient as just having like a roller reel, right? Uh, so I prefer to have a roller reel. Um, but yeah, otherwise, yeah, the mute button's fine, and having this just prefer to have volume roller instead. But yeah, otherwise, um, 
not a bad keyboard or anything. Just, I think I prefer to have the volume roller and uh, I'm not a huge fan of the MX Reds. But this is a nice backup keyboard. I use this as a backup gaming keyboard, basically. So, yeah, this is the, uh, the Corsair K63. I can flick it up. There's, uh, of course, you have stands on the back. Pick it up and then, yeah, in with this one. It's unfortunate I don't have all the keycaps. Yeah, this and this switch is kind of broken as well, unfortunately. But they're not very, they're not vital keys, thankfully. Yeah, it's not a bad keyboard. Just, just a backup one, I guess. <laughs> all right, so after the Logitech Orion uh, G610, I had. Um, remember how I said that keyboard? I couldn't really use it anymore because um, basically got too dirty. Um, had to replace it. So I replaced it with the Rocket Vulcan 121 and uh, I've gotten a lot of comments about this keyboard and yeah it's a pretty nice looking keyboard actually I know it looks kind of dirty right now because yeah again I'm a lazy person uh, but yeah like I've used this keyboard for the past year and a half I think I got this last year I'm very satisfied with it um, so basically it keeps all the nice things I liked about the Logitech which is it has like the nice media buttons here uh, so you can easily mute and then yeah this is for effects I guess don't really use this one uh, this is for volume and then you have a uh, volume knob right here which is equivalent to the little scroller reel I had to adjust the volume on the Logitech and it uses Cherry MX Browns just like the just like the Logitech so yeah so um I really like the the MX Brown keys I think these keys are pretty nice oh, actually these are not Cherry MX Browns they're the Rocket's equivalent of uh, Cherry MX Browns, but I think Rocket did a pretty good job of emulating them. Um, so yeah, Rocket is a, is a well-respected German company making a lot of gaming peripherals. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend these, uh, the Rocket Vulcan, Vulcan uh, 121. This is a pretty nice mechanical keyboard here. So yeah, I really like the way how the switches and everything. I've been using this for the past year and a half. I have no plans to upgrade this keyboard because it's, it's just really nice, yeah. Basically, until it becomes unusable again, <laughs> I'll, I'll keep using this one. So yeah, this is basically my next full-size mechanical keyboard. So I have the 10-key numpad um, here. And yeah, it's pretty much uh, this one. I, unfortunately, it's not detachable cable. Um, and then, of course, it also has back parts, which I can use to prop up the keyboard like this. All right, pretty nice. So overall, I'm very satisfied. The Rocket Vulcan 121. Cherry MX Brown keys, uh, nice media switches, volume knob, everything. It's got everything that I want. And uh, yeah, um, actually the way that it looks is pretty nice too. And yeah, I really like the way it looks too. Um, it's just cleaning mechanical keyboards is always a hassle. <laughs> it's always a hassle for me to clean mechanical keyboards. So that's the only thing I'm lazy. But yeah, you can see uh, these are definitely very high travel. See how high travel these keys are? Yeah. So you get a very nice amount of travel on these. So, yep, very satisfied with these. This is my main gaming keyboard uh, for the past one and a half years. All right, so my next mechanical keyboard is the Cooler Master SK622. And I uh, bought this last year, 2021, um, originally to be used as uh, a keyboard for my work MacBook. So I mostly use this for my day job, which is programming. So yeah, um, what's special about this keyboard is a few things. So first of all, it's, it's a slim profile mechanical keyboard. So that means look at the keys. You can, you can tell the travel is not quite as much as a, a traditional uh, mechanical keyboard. Um, so it doesn't have quite as much travel, but it's still a pretty decent amount of travel. Definitely better than a membrane keyboard, right? So yeah, I still like the, the feedback and tactility of this keyboard. It's, it's using MX, well, it's not using the Cherry MX Blues, but it's using Cooler Masters version of the MX Blues. So it's their own proprietary type of keys that's meant to emulate the uh, the Cherry MX Blues. So it's a clicky and tactile type of feedback, which um, which I like for, for coding and programming, I guess. So when I'm actually doing that kind of work, uh, I prefer to have the clickiness actually to give me a little bit more feedback when I'm typing. Like for gaming and stuff, yeah, I like uh, MX Brown type switches. I think those are good. Um, it's a nice little compromise in between the linearity of the reds and the clickiness of the blues. But for programming and coding, I think I actually prefer having the blues, just having the clickiness of the and the yeah, I just prefer having this type of feedback. Yeah, for programming and coding and work stuff, I actually prefer to have the clicky type. Yeah, just to give me a little bit more feedback. Um, so yeah, when I'm typing and stuff like that, it's really nice. 
Um, so yeah, I like these keys even though they're not really uh, official Cherry MX keys. Um, I think Cooler Master did a pretty good job on these keys. Um, and yeah, this, there's actually a lot of features on this keyboard. First of all, it's very compact. So you notice how like how compact and slim it is, right? So it's actually very easy to travel with. And um, these days I actually use this keyboard as my main travel keyboard as well uh, because well, my work MacBook is uh, using the, the old school MacBook, um, well, I consider it old school now, but it uses the old butterfly switches for the keyboard, which uh, sucks, you know. Nobody really likes the butterfly keys and they break and everything. So I need to bring an external keyboard to actually be able to use, um, <laughs> you know, when I'm traveling or I'm, I'm working remotely, right? So, yeah, like work, when I'm working remotely, uh, I'm taking my MacBook to other places and it's using, you know, the butterfly keyboards, which uh, isn't very good. So I want to have an external keyboard to use it with. And this is a really nice travel keyboard because of its size and slim profile. Um, and also a really cool thing about this keyboard is uh, it works equally well with Mac and Windows. So it even has this Mac Windows switch right here. So you notice that a lot of the keys is actually, they have the dual mapping for both Windows keys and for Mac keys. So you'll, have, you'll see like command here, options, those are kind of Mac keys. Um, and then they'll have um, the Mac specific type of keys up here in addition to the Windows keys. So a lot of uh, the mechanical keyboards on the market, especially the gaming keyboards, are mostly geared towards PC gamers, right? Because the majority of gamers use PC to play games with. Um, so majority of the game keyboards are really geared towards PC users. And then of course, you know, Logitech and, and uh, Keychron and, you know, DAS keyboard, like they all make like Mac specific keyboards. But it's cool that this Cooler Master, uh, it works equally well for both. And it's, um, yeah, I, I, I like the versatility of this keyboard as well. I can use this for my PC or for my, uh, for my Mac. Yeah, so I like the versatility of this keyboard that I can use it for both the, um, yeah, I can use it for Windows uh, and Mac. So, yeah. Um, and another thing is this keyboard, by the way, it uses USB-C. So please take note of that Corsair <laughs> USB-C. Um, it's also both wireless and wired. So I can plug it up wired and um, there's a switch here actually on the side. And I can actually turn it wireless as well. So um, there's another factor here. I can use this both wired and wireless. So very, very versatile. And another cool thing about this keyboard, um, I guess I can change the, the lighting of this keyboard in many different ways. So there's a Cooler Master button here. Uh, if I hold that, a um, few things I can do here. I, mean, I can increase the strength of the LEDs, right? This is full strength. Um, and kind of uh, change the different, I think this one is the, the colors I can cycle through. Right now it's like going through the rainbow colors. Um, I can increase the RGB here, reds greens and blues right here. Um, this one can actually cycle through different types. Yeah, different types of lighting here. Yeah, this one, different types of lighting. Yeah, this one's kind of just flashing right here. Yeah, this one is like flashing rainbow colors now. <laughs> So yeah, there's many things, different things you can do with this keyboard. I like how versatile it is. Uh, first, it's small enough and compact enough to be used, um, you know, on your desk, you know, with a really clean setup. Um, then it's also good for traveling because, you know, see how like slim and how portable it is, how compact it is. It's 10 keyless, of course. Um, and yeah, the basically it's a, it's a world of a difference compared to my Aorus Thunder K3 from years ago. <laughs> that one was also a 10 keyless, but it was like way bigger and chunkier than this. Um, it's wireless and wired. It works with both PC and Mac. So yeah, this uh, just a very versatile keyboard. Uh, so you might be wondering, why did I replace this as my work keyboard? Uh, well, the thing is uh, on the back, I have these like, these two like, um, Usually keyboards, you know, they have this little stand thing uh, that will help prop it up to make typing more ergonomic. And unfortunately, I lost these. So it no longer props up. And that means my wrist has to be like kind of flat on the desk here, which I don't like. It's not very ergonomic. Uh, and, you know, I tried putting like some, uh, I've tried putting like, you know, some makeshift stands underneath here to help fix that, but it didn't really work very well. So you know, eventually I just decided maybe I should try thinking about getting another keyboard. Um, I know, like, I'll just keep this as my travel keyboard, which, you know, I still use this uh, when I'm taking my 
MacBook to work somewhere else. Um, I'll still use this keyboard, um, just put it in my backpack and stuff. But at home, I don't want to keep doing this, um, putting my wrist on desk like this. Like, uh, I want to have a more ergonomic keyboard that will have like that stand at the back. And I paid about a hundred bucks US for this keyboard. Um, and these days you can find it cheaper online. So it's actually a really good deal if you can find this online and snag it for cheaper. I've seen it like for 50 bucks actually online. So that price is kind of a steal. But uh, yeah, I paid full price, which is like hundred bucks US for this, which is a little bit on the expensive side for um, a keyboard that's, you know, I guess compact keyboards can have a premium, right? I'm thinking like full size keyboards usually should cost more, but in the mechanical keyboard market, it's a little bit weird because people are, are willing to pay premium prices for more compact and um, cleaner looking keyboards. So I guess this is normal. And uh, yeah, there, you can see a lot of 10 keyless keyboard setups out there costing a lot more than this. So I guess it's all right, but now you can, you can probably find it even cheaper online now these days. Yeah, so if you do find it for 50, 60 dollars online now, it's definitely a steal because this is such a versatile, nice keyboard. So the keyboard I ended up replacing the Cooler Master with uh, for my work keyboard is the Ducky SF12. Uh, so this keyboard is made by a uh, Taiwanese company, Ducky. Cooler Master, by the way, is also Taiwanese. So yeah, this uh, this keyboard is, I think, um, it's it's a pretty interesting replacement because it's not an exact replacement. Now, first of all, it does not use low low profile keys, right? You can tell that it uses a traditional uh, profile so it's not as slim not as compact if I compare it you can see the size difference here so uh, yeah the ducky is definitely bigger not by a lot the ducky is still reasonably compact but uh, definitely the cooler master is uh, smaller and more compact than the ducky is by a little bit so yeah you can see the, the difference here right um, and then plus the, the fact that the cooler master has slim profile Key, mechanical keys compared to the the duckies more traditional profile um, and this one's also blue by the way he uses the, um, the this one uses actual cherry MX blues in it um, so although I don't I think the cooler masters blues are pretty good as well but it's always nice to have an authentic cherry MX blue here and um, and yeah this is uh, I think it's a pretty nice keyboard overall I've been using it uh, since I think I've been using it for about eight months and I paid about $100 for this one too. So roughly it's about the same price as the Cooler Master. Um, not much difference there, but all important thing actually, <laughs> I know this is kind of silly reason, you know, for people, and people will be like, well, you know, this, it's a silly reason for buying a new keyboard, honestly, but uh, maybe I just wanted to have an excuse for buying a new one. But yeah, just to have these little supports at the back here. Remember, I'd lost them on the Cooler Master. So on the duckies, obviously I had to have them. <laughs> so this is a pretty crucial for me when I'm working. I gotta have the ergonomic stuff. But the ducky has an additional few things. Um, first of all, I like the aesthetic of the duckies. So you can see the ducky, one, two, SF, switch the world. So they have on the back here. And then they also have this plate here on the back with a serial number. You can say made in Taiwan. So yeah, duckies, pre keyboards are pretty premium and they're premiumly priced as well. There's dip switches in the back here. I'm not actually sure what these do. I'll have to look it up, but I never actually had to um, turn any of these on or anything. And uh, this one is actually not wireless. I have to, uh, yeah, I have to connect this wired, which is fine. I usually keep it wired anyways. And um, yeah, so Ducky is a company that actually does a lot of collaborations, uh, I think. So actually, they release a lot of limited editions of their keyboards, and a lot of them have really nice aesthetics. So you can see there's a little bit design here on the space bar, but this is like relatively minimal. They have um, other keyboards that have designs on most of their keycaps and stuff like that. That look, they have so many different designs actually for their keyboards and limited editions. So. If you care about the design and aesthetics of your keyboard, then I highly recommend Ducky because they have a lot of really cool designs. So yeah, that's the other thing. As I, I, I do like this design. Um, it's one of the reasons why I uh, chose to get this one. Um, another thing is, maybe this is the reason why this one's a little bit you know, wider than the Cooler Master is it has um, the delete page up and page down is uh, on like a separate column here compared to the, the Cooler Master actually doesn't have that separate column. So that's another thing that uh, I think it makes it a little bit easier to, to hit as well. Um, 
And yeah, I think the keys are a little bit bigger than the Cooler Master. So overall, so it's a bit of a bigger keyboard, but the keys and stuff are easier to hit. So that's also pr pretty nice as well compared to the Cooler Master. That's why I think of the Cooler Master more as a travel keyboard. Um, slim profile, the keys are relatively small. The duckies have, um, I think, more normal size keys than their traditional travel and everything. Um, but still reasonably compact, right? It's, uh, it's just a little bit bigger than the Cooler Master, still reasonably compact. Uh, the one thing is, this is not really meant for Mac. As you can see, there's no Mac-specific keys on this. It's mostly meant for PC, so um, basically I have to... Yeah, I have to just remember uh, what everything does here for the Mac, right? So I have to remember, oh, this is actually Command here. Um, that's where I mapped it to, and, you know, I mapped something here, and all the Mac option buttons and um, function buttons are actually up here for the Mac, so I have to just kind of remember that because this keyboard wasn't specifically made for Mac um, so that's kind of just like a, a gripe minor gripe about it because I didn't get any special Mac version of this keyboard um, but that's that's really it otherwise this is a nice keyboard uh, for my work so I use this as my daily driver as a work keyboard um, for my MacBook actually uh, yeah it's it's probably better for PC but anyways as a compact uh, 10 keyless mechanical keyboard. I think the Ducky 1 SF2 is fine. So yeah, and plus I just like the aesthetic of this keyboard. So yeah, that's it. Um, that's really the history of my keyboards. Uh, I, I use this one as my daily driver for work, my Ducky 1 SF2, and then my Cooler Master, uh, mostly for traveling, I think. I'll bring this keyboard just to have a, a nice compact mechanical keyboard uh, to bring. Um, with, and I can, I can use it with my MacBook Air M2 as well. So that's nice, uh, or for working. And um, yeah, I use my Rocket Vulcan 121 as my main gaming keyboard and my Corsair um, as kind of like a backup keyboard. So, so that's really got it, guys. That's a history kind of rundown of my um, different keyboards and mice. Okay, I want to add two more keyboards to this video. So uh, the first part of this video when I made it was done in 2022. So as of 2024, I have since added two new keyboards to my collection. Uh, these are both 75% size keyboards, which means they're 75% the size of a full-size keyboard. Um, and first, I want to talk about the Logitech MX Mac Mini. Uh, so this one is more as like, um, it's initially I used it for work, but um, later on I decided to keep this more as a travel keyboard. So this is just a really light, uh, really light and portable keyboard, uh, very minimalistic. And uh, it's got like these tactile switches that are also very quiet. So, um, well, not too quiet. You guys can obviously hear, right? Still some sound when you're typing. But anyways, it's good for, for use in like a cafe or office or something like that. It's not like too loud where it would disturb people. Um, and it's got a good enough feedback. It's not like... It's not the same type of feedback that you would get out of a regular mechanical keyboard because these are like low profile switches. So... Yeah, these are low profile switches, so it's not going to be the same type of tactile feedback that you get um, from a regular mechanical keyboard. But still, I think this is good enough for most people. Most people will be satisfied with this kind of keyboard. And it is very compact and uh, very portable and very light. Um, so yeah, the MX Mechanical Mini for Mac. Actually, this is specifically meant for Mac, and unfortunately you can't really replace the keys or do much with that. But um, yeah, it works well. It's wireless only, unfortunately. There is a USB-C connector, but you cannot use it to connect to a computer. That's only for charging. Um, so <laughs> yeah, unfortunately it's only wireless, so you cannot use it wired. But uh, overall, I think this is a good keyboard just for, for traveling. Just put it in a backpack, and you can just unfold it, right, and uh, work at a cafe somewhere uh, with your MacBook out. So that's if you, you know, don't like your MacBook keyboard, and this is obviously better than a laptop keyboard. So yeah, so good enough. Um, costs about $150, I would say, or $175 US. It's, it's definitely expensive, but, you know, at the same time, I think that for a light, portable travel keyboard, the Logitech MX Mac Mini is pretty good for that. And uh, you just plop it down, right, uh, anywhere, pretty much. It doesn't take up that much space, and it's very light and portable, and it's wireless and everything, so it's very minimalistic. And, yeah, tactile switches are good enough, I would say. It's, it's yeah, these low-profile, quiet tactile switches. It's okay. Um, again, not the same type of feedback as a full-size, you know, a full mechanical keyboard, but it's good enough for most people, yeah. So anyways, yeah, and of course, uh, this is mostly for 
for working and stuff since uh, it's Mac and I usually only use my Mac for work. But yeah, that's the Logitech MX Mac Mini that I have. Um, the other keyboard I want to talk about is the Keychron Q1 Pro. Uh, so this is the newest one, um, newest keyboard I have out of uh, the, the keyboards in this video. And this one costs about uh, $200 MSRP. I actually got this for $160 though. Uh, I got this one with the brown switches. And this one is just a really, really nice feeling keyboard. It's, uh, first of all, it's just built like a tank. I mean, this has got like an aluminum metal base. So, I mean, damn, you can just throw this around and it's, yeah, it's, it's like a tank. <laughs> it's built like one. Um, and Keychron is a company that uh, focus, it's a really enthusiast keyboard company. They have tons of different models and selections and um, very, very customizable. So they, they have a lot of different selections, uh, a lot of different switches and stuff and keycaps. Um, but yeah, I chose mine with just the brown switches, which I think is a nice in between. Um, not as clicky as blues, but uh, but more feedback, you know, tactile feedback than the linear switch. And yeah, we really like this one. Uh, it's a 75% keyboard, keyboard, and I think that's a good size. Um, overall, all the keys and just the feedback is really nice. Yeah, I really like it. It's, it's like a, almost like a very big difference between this and the Logitech. Logitech, because of low profile, doesn't really give you much feedback. But uh, the Keychron, oh man, get the full, key, full feedback out of this one. Yeah, I think one issue with the MX Mac Mini is that it uses these low profile, like tactile switches or quiet tactile switches is what they call them. So the feedback isn't exactly the same as what you get out of a out of a full mechanical keyboard. So it's not like, um, yeah, it doesn't use like regular switches. It uses low profile ones, which feel more like, like laptop keyboards almost. But of course, uh, better than laptop keyboards, but still. Because it's low profile, you don't get the same type of typing feedback and tactile feedback that you would from, yeah, like the Keychron. Like this is using actual full-size switches, right? So typing experience and the feedback is a lot better on the Keychron. Yeah, the MX Mac Mini. Yeah, one of the issues is this is good enough for most people, I understand, but uh, yeah, but for a keyboard enthusiast, it's it's just not going to be good enough. Um, the low profile switches here are just not going to cut it. Um, better than a laptop keyboard, but that's not saying much, <laughs> right? Uh, so, anyways, yeah, I just felt like this. These keys are just not satisfying enough for me. I I definitely prefer the Keychron switches. Yeah, this one. That's what I'm talking about. Oh man, just feels so good to type on this keyboard. That's what a mechanical keyboard should be like. So really like it and of course uh, it's very customizable you can remap all the buttons you can replace all the keycaps with whatever you want you can even replace the switches with what you want um, very customizable um, I like the knob up here as well I am use this for adjusting volume and uh, also cool thing about this one you can use it with both Windows and Mac and also you can use it both wired and wireless so huge advantage over the MX Mac Mini right the Mac Mini only works with Mac and it's only wireless. <laughs> this one gives you a lot more options. So, uh, so yeah, overall, really like this one. This has become my main work keyboard now that I just put in my desk. Of course, it's not as portable as the MX Mac Mini is. This one is very light. This one is pretty heavy, so if you put it in your backpack, you'll definitely feel it. Um, but it's definitely a lot more sturdy, a lot more durable, a lot more customizable, a lot more customizable, and um, the feedback on the switches and keys is a lot better. So yeah, as an actual typing experience, there's no comparison. This is way better than the MX Mac Mini for the actual typing experience. Um, but yeah, also for the customizability and the, the durability and everything. Uh, so yeah, I would say I use this as my main typing keyboard and work keyboard most of the time. Um, and then only for travel purposes would I ever bring the MX Mac Mini. Because, yeah, <laughs> if you compare, um, I definitely prefer the Keychron Q1 Pro. I think that this one is, uh, the typing experience is a lot better. Yeah, more customizable, better built. Um, the, the major advantage that the Logitech would have is just this, the portability and the lightness, and that's really about it. Um, so, anyways, just want to add these two keyboards to the video, the Logitech MX Mac Mini and the Keychron Q1 Pro, uh, both 75% size keyboards. Um, but yeah, I think they're, they're both good just for different use cases. So that's it, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, um, <laughs> what you guys think of my keyboards. Uh, and yeah, as always, thanks for watching.